Clean and safe drinking water is a basic necessity that we can easily take for granted in this country. But now a group of unregulated, potentially toxic chemicals, part of American life for decades, they are being increasingly detected in the water of thousands of American communities. Tonight, what our investigation uncovered and, and what you can do to keep your family safe. Here's Devin Dwyer. In the parched desert community of Tucson, Arizona, a precious natural resource is under threat. This is what we call the, uh, the inflow into the plant. Water from the city's underground aquifer can pulse through these pipes at 10,000 gallons a minute, filtered, purified, and sent to taps in thousands of homes and businesses. But this spring, the city abruptly shut the plant down. We know that there's this contamination out there. We don't know exactly what it does. Uh, but we know it's not going away. Tests detected elevated levels of man-made chemicals known as per- and polyfluoroalkyl substances, or PFAS. They're colorless, tasteless, and scientists say potentially dangerous to human health over time. You lost confidence that these filters could take it out and guarantee the water safe. We don't have enough confidence to go to drinking water supply at this time using just granular activated carbon. The indefinite shutdown turned off a source of drinking water for 60,000 and residents raising concerns about safety. You know, there's so many memories growing up here. You know, Patty Daggett's old neighborhood on the city's friends. south side Happy is still scarred by up. tap water poisoned in the 1980s by an industrial spill of the chemical solvent trichloroethylene or TCE. Daggett swam in the contaminated water as a child and drank from the tap in her home. In 2014, at age 47, she was diagnosed with a rare form of blood cancer, her doctor linked to the chemicals. He said that I had, that he had, through that cytogenic test, determined that my cancer had been caused by a toxin. But I'm telling you right now, I would never let any of my kids, my grandkids, anybody in my family drink water in, in the faucet anymore. The TCE pollution, which went undetected for years, is linked to cancer cases and deaths across South Tucson. Hundreds of residents, including Daggett, received financial settlements and major lawsuits. In 1983, the EPA listed Tucson as a Superfund site, where cleanup of the water has been underway until now. This water treatment facility was designed to filter out two other toxic chemicals, but when PFOS arrived, city officials decided to shut it down. Mayor Regina Romero says a stream of PFOS contaminated groundwater more than 143 times above the suggested EPA safety level threatened to overwhelm the city's drinking water filters and resurfaced old fears. We still have many families that lost loved ones uh, because of TCE. And so um, it is it is palpable, it is present. How dangerous is PFAS in your view? Is it, is it as concerning as, it as, is as TCE? Concerning. It is as concerning. The Environmental Protection Agency does not require testing for PFAS and does not enforce a national standard for the maximum amount that's safe to drink. But in 2016, concerned by emerging data on adverse health effects, the EPA issued an advisory to local water systems, saying PFAS exposure over 70 parts per trillion may result in liver damage, weakened immune systems, and cancer. The ones that are most strongly linked are kidney and testicular cancer. They can also have effects on developing babies and on women while they're pregnant. Dr. Jamie DeWitt is a toxicologist and pharmacologist leading cutting-edge research on how PFAS affects the human body over prolonged exposure. For those people who have PFAS in their bodies, there's not really anything that they can do to force them out of their bodies more rapidly. We don't have any drugs that will make you pee out PFAS really quickly. So if, if you're watching this and you're concerned about PFAS, you have to educate yourself. Where do you get your water and what do you know about what's in your water? Scientists with the Environmental Working Group in Washington have detected some amount of PFAS in groundwater or drinking water in nearly 2,800 American communities across 49 states. The contamination often linked to nearby industrial sites, landfills, airports, and military bases where the chemicals may have seeped into the ground.
We're walking on top of a huge reservoir of PFAS. You can't see it, but it's right beneath us. Yeah, it's very University of Arizona hydrologist Bo Gua walked us through where scientists suspect some of Tucson's PFAS contamination began. He says the heat resistant chemicals never break down, calling them forever chemicals that leave a traceable trail through the soil. You call this a ticking time bomb of a problem? Yeah, they basically um, fulfill the, the characteristics of a ticking time bomb, right? It's very dangerous and they have, they're migrating. Um, very slowly. State and local officials believe firefighting foam laden with the chemicals permeated soil around Tucson's airport and Air National Guard facility decades ago, only now reaching groundwater wells miles away. The firefighting foam, they have told us that they either, if it was used on, was used on the runway, they'd hose the stuff into the soil. If it was used in the hangars, they'd dilute it and dump it down the sewer system. Councilman Steve Kozacek has been pressing the military to expedite cleanup and remediation, especially as climate change fuels historic drought. We're in the desert. By the way, you know, we're in a 12-year drought in the city of Tucson right now. So there will, be, there will come a time when the Colorado River water is no longer available and we're going to be reliant on our groundwater. This map from the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality shows PFAS concentrations in groundwater around 10,000 parts per trillion, far above the EPA's 70 parts per trillion advisory, stretching from the airport to wells that deliver water to the treatment plant. Tucson's Air National Guard's base is one of the largest F-16 training facilities in the world. It's also one of 650 military installations linked to PFAS contamination. The Defense Department says it's investigating the scope of known or suspected contamination at or near hundreds of facilities, but needs more time before it can launch a large-scale cleanup plan. Five years ago, the military began deploying what it calls a new environmentally responsible firefighting foam, but it's not PFAS-free. Tucson's a bellwether. You know, we're the, we're the uh, canary in the, in the coal mine right now. We're saying to every other city in the country, this is an issue if you've got a military base in your, in your community. PFAS contamination linked to firefighting foams has been detected on the lake shores in northern Michigan and neighborhoods near an old naval air station in Pennsylvania. In New Mexico, a dairy farmer claims in a federal lawsuit that groundwater contaminated by PFAS poisoned his cows. And in March, after a foam spill at this small Virginia airport, PFAS was discovered in the water system of suburbs of the nation's capital. So it's all over this area and it's in the backyards of people who are working on these issues. Water quality analyst Sydney Evans estimates more than 200 million Americans could be drinking some amount of PFAS in their tap water every day. It's not just localized issues of contamination, but these are issues in big metropolitan areas as well, and, and that there's still not any testing requirements at the national level. The EPA declined our request for an interview, but told us in a statement that addressing PFAS in drinking water is a top priority, and that it's developed developing a multi-year strategy to deliver critical public health protections. The agency says it's moving quickly while balancing the law, industry interests, and the science. Consumer advocates say EPA's delay in regulating the chemicals is highly troubling. I think that the EPA, we need to hold their feet to the fire because nothing is going to change. Nothing will go forward until they set those limits. Yolanda Herrera has been advocating for safer drinking water for decades. She says she believes the city of Tucson's assurances that its water is safe and PFAS free, but says Americans nationwide need to pay attention. They can't just depend on their neighborhood leader or their mayor to make this change. It's going to take all of us together to go to Congress, to go to the EPA, to make the major changes that need to be done. Congress has started to take action. In a bipartisan vote last month, the House approved a bill that would force EPA to declare PFAS hazardous and establish a national drinking water limit requiring water systems to start filtering it out. The Senate's bipartisan infrastructure deal includes billions to help communities get the job done. The residents of our community should not be left holding the bag of something that they did not create. In South Tucson, Patty Daggett, whose cancer is in remission, worries now about her aging mother, Natalie, still living in the family's south side home, still washing in the water, but not drinking it. I wish I could tell you how worried I am because 
you know, my mom's been affected, I've been affected, her mom's been affected. All of these families in this neighborhood have been affected. You're supposed to trust the water company, you know? I mean... Do you trust them today? Do you think they fixed no. it? No. no, I won't even give my dog, I give my dog bottled water. And we don't know who to trust. Devin joins us now. So Devin, how can you check to see if there's any amount of PFAS in your tap water and is any level safe to drink? What does the science tell us? Yeah, Lindsay, many local water companies actually voluntarily test for PFAS, so experts told us you can start there, check their results, which are often published online, ask those questions. As for safety, many of the medical experts we talked to said actually no level of PFAS is ideal to consume, although it's uh, really prevalent in our environment. Sometimes it's hard to avoid. The EPA advisory suggests over a lifetime we shouldn't be consuming more than 70 parts per trillion, but again, because that test Testing is not required. It's really hard to tell what is coming out of your tap when it comes to PFAS. And you also mentioned just how prevalent these chemicals are. They're not just found in firefighting foam. That's right. PFAS are ubiquitous, Lindsay. They're in all aspects of our life. There are more than 4,000 different types of these chemicals. They coat our nonstick pans, our waterproof jackets, our stainproof uh, furniture. Manufacturers for years have said these chemicals are indispensable to our lives. They say they're uh, inherently safe, aside from a, a few outliers which have been banned. But the biggest worry right now from consumer advocates, Lindsay, uh, is the amount of these chemicals showing up in our water. And I expect we'll be hearing much more soon from the EPA on this, especially with the growing pressure uh, from Congress and consumers uh, demanding more safeguards. Lindsay? Yeah, I imagine a lot of people are going to be concerned by this. Devin Dwyer, our thanks to you. Thanks, Lindsay.